This morning, uh, I had had coffee uh, on the balcony uh, of the Acropolis Museum, overlooking the beautiful site uh, of the Parthenon. And I was thinking, there were other cities before Athens, but in Athens, uh, it really thrived on the curiosity, the creativity, and the collaboration that developed when people came together. And I still think that today, that it's these ideas and this curiosity that makes it possible to have a coffee from Arabia and a croissant from France. And it's all enjoyed uh, by a woman from a Nordic place somewhere uh, that Pericles didn't even know existed. And this trend has continued. We still uh, enjoy cities, we move to cities, and urbanization is going on. Even though uh, technology now makes it possible for us to communicate over a distance, but we still prefer cities. Or to put it in the words uh, of a city enthusiast, uh, the Harvard professor Edward Glaser, he says that although technology has put a death to distance, the world isn't flat, it is paved. People prefer cities. Today, every hour, there is 7,500 more people in our cities. That's almost one and a half new Athens every month in the world. And I know that my, my hometown, Stockholm, we uh, add another busload of people every, every week. But the majority of this growth is happening in Asia. And today there are more than uh, 450 million people cities in the world. Although 100 years ago there were only cities. So when, when all of these people, when it's so dense between people, of course there, there's problems. Uh, we have pollution, uh, we have noise, uh, we also have uh, slums, and we have uh, segregation and higher crime. And it's also so that although cities only encompass 2% of the Earth's surface, uh, it's uh, anyway so that it emits 80% of the CO2 and it consumes 75% uh, of all the energy. But there's also, um, of course, upsides on cities. Cities are very efficient, and it's so uh, they're very well connected to the prosperity of a nation. Uh, it's even a perfect correlation. If you add 10% urban, po urban population in your nation, uh, you get a 30% higher uh, economic output of your country. So in cities, people come together, people with different backgrounds, with different education, different ages, uh, and you have this diversity that really inspires uh, and, and increases creativity and innovation. And innovation leads to higher productivity, which in turn gives you this economic output. There's a, a bit of a myth, I think, around the internet. I think um, that on the internet, it's fantastic, don't get me wrong. Um, but usually when you go on the internet, you get more of the same. More of the same what you are looking for. But you seldom get an epiphany. But that you can get on, in the city. Back in ancient Greece, uh, uh, people met in the square. We still meet in the square. Uh, people share ideas. We share patterns. We share designs. Uh, we build on each other's ideas. And that is very much what makes us human, building uh, on others' idea. It's seldom a, a lonely person in a lab making a full invention, but we build on each other's ideas. Last uh, week I was in, in Sao Paulo, and I listened to uh, the mayor, Mayor Haddad. He, he made a presentation, and he talks about this very thing. He, he, he basically said that the scientific, the cultural, uh, and the technological production of a city, it was really crucial. It's dependent on people getting together, the meeting of people to get that going. So he saw that as one of his biggest challenges to really provide and to, to support 
the meeting between people in this city. At Ericsson, we have a consumer lab. We interview some uh, 100,000 people every year. Uh, and also, we specifically interview people in cities around the world. And what we have found that us people in cities, uh, we're actually more social. We meet our friends more than people living elsewhere. But we also socialize on online more uh, than people living outside of the cities. And our research show that uh, we, we are on the online social media networks 45 minutes a day. But we also made measurements in our, our mobile networks. And there we have seen that in the most used networks, we are on social networks 85 minutes a day. And I saw from another research that who then is most on these social networks? It was actually the Stockholm women. <laughs> so <laughs> why is that? Are we different than others? No, I don't, I don't really think so. We're not more social than others. But we do have the, uh, the, the means. The, the, it's easy for us. M many of us, most of us, ha has a smartphone. And uh, we have had broadband for a long time in Sweden. And our operators, they're in the forefront introducing new technology. So it's convenient. So possibly that's why we use it. I know that there's a, a trend in Athens and in Greece, a huge trend of, of starting up new companies. And uh, we also do have this uh, trend in Stockholm. Uh, maybe not for the same reason, but we definitely do. We were talking to uh, Tobian Bengtsson. Uh, he's uh, part of the Stockholm business region. And he said that there's a shift happening in Sweden. Students graduating uh, from the top schools in Stockholm they don't go as they usually always did, go to the big consulting firms or the, the big uh, technology firms. But instead, they start their own business straight after graduating. And in Stockholm, uh, they also have a few good companies to look up to. Just to mention a few, one of them uh, you might have heard of is uh, Spotify. It's the world's largest streaming music uh, company. Uh, very successful and it has really transformed the music industry. It has gone from being a physical distribution of music to a digital distribution and they totally um, changed uh, the business logic of the music industry where you subscribe per month to all the music you want. Another example uh, is in from the, the gaming industry. It's a company called DICE. Uh, they, for instance, make uh, a game called Battlefield. Perhaps there's a few Battlefield gamers here. Uh, they sold uh, <laughs> that's one <laughs> good. Uh, they sold like 70 million copies of their latest edition uh, of the Battlefield. And th their headquarters is uh, in an island in central Stockholm called Söderman. And around this gaming company, a lot of small startups in gaming have popped up like mushroom uh, out of the soil. This is very annoying. Does this happen to you? Ever? Yeah, it happens. Our research shows that one minute, uh, one second, sorry, one second, we can still keep our attention if this happens. But after four to eight seconds, we get annoyed and our mind starts to drift away to something else. And after 10 seconds, 50% of us basically give up. And a lot of us never try to go back to that web page ever again. And the fact is that we built our networks, our mobile networks, for voice. So when you see these coverage maps on mobile networks, you think voice. But today, uh, the voice traffic is, or the data traffic in our networks is seven to eight times larger than the voice traffic. It's all data in the networks. And the coverage for your applications is not the same. Basically, the network performance, very simply put, it declines with the distance from the base station. So far away from the base station, you can still make your calls. You can still ma ma um, do your SMS. But to be able to do stream your music 
or watch a high definition YouTube video, uh, the, the coverage uh, is something uh, completely different. So basically you have a different coverage map for every application. You have one coverage map for Facebook, one for YouTube and maybe one for Spotify. So this is uh, the next phase for our mobile operators uh, to consider. Back to our consumer lab again and their uh, interviews and research into city dwellers like us. Well, what do we like the most about our cities? We love our restaurants, the shopping and the entertainment. But also up there are two utilities, the running water and equally important is the mobile coverage. What are we frustrated about and what is well, what are we least satisfied about? Well, it's actually uh, the communication with authorities, the air quality, and of course, the traffic, the commuting, uh, the parking. So let's look at a few examples, what you can do about this. This is an example from a rather small city. Uh, it's called Panchevo, it's in Serbia. And uh, here they have connected all the buses in the city. Uh, I met the deputy mayor uh, about a year ago and he passionately told me about this. So these connected buses are they're not only used to, to ha have a management system of the buses, so both the bus operator knows exactly where all the buses are and also you as a, a citizen know where the buses are, you can look it up in your smartphone. But th what they also have used these connected buses for is to put environmental sensors on the buses. And the background to this is uh, that Panchevo has a large petrochemical industry and the citizens are very environmentally aware and concerned. So now, uh, before letting your children off to school, you can check in your smartphone that is a, a green light uh, on the air quality and you can let them go. Another example, I find it uh, uh, very fun, in Paris, they, they try to do a lot of different things there uh, to get <laughs> the traffic situation under control. I mean, they have uh, uh, a bike sharing scheme and they also have this car uh, sharing scheme where you basically subscribe to a car. It's called Autolib and it's electric cars. And I have a friend, uh, he lives in, in Paris. Uh, he has small children, and he told me, I got rid of my car, I love this. How come? It feels very to be dependent on something, but he loves it. In, uh, there's always a car available, he tells me. He looks it up in his smartphone, finds a car nearby, and best of all, when he's done driving, he can always find his parking spot. Did you know that 30% of all the traffic in a, in a city, that's people looking for parking? 30% of the traffic, and he loves it. And one thing he told me as well, that I find a little bit hard to believe, it's actually that when he gets into a new car, it's always clean, there's no garbage left from the driver before him. I find it hard to believe, but that's what he claims. So what about ICT in our cities, information and communication technology? Uh, we have looked, we have a city index where we compare different cities and what we've seen that there is a, a linear correlation between the ICT maturity of a city and its uh, development in the social, economic and the environmental dimension uh, utilizing this ICT. We have also done some research together with Arthur D. Little uh, and it has shown that for every uh, 10 percentage points in increase in broadband penetration, uh, we get 1% increase in GDP in your country. And also if you double the speed of broadband, uh, you get a, a sustainable increase of the GDP by 0.3%. So back again to the satisfaction. People are pretty happy with the connection at home and at work, but in the places in between, it could be better. When we're out and about, when we're at a sport event or a music event, 
or when we're using uh, the local trace of the subway. So adding this to the urbanization, that our, our city is getting more and more people. And adding to this, that we predict that in only five years' time, there would be 12 times more uh, data, mobile data in the networks. And it will be as many as 4.5 billion smartphones in the world, or smartphone subscriptions, or more than 9 billion mobile subscriptions. The good thing is uh, that more than 85% of us will be within the coverage of a high-speed internet. So, a few thoughts or advice is to really, for a city to, to encourage this entrepreneurship, to encourage these clusters, to make it easier uh, to have a startup scene in, in your city, and to unleash creativity by providing uh, these uh, information and communication uh, structures. Foster education, as Athen has for a long time done, increase the mobility, make it easier for people to meet. But also not only think about buildings and roads and water pipe, but also think about the green and the playgrounds. So we strongly believe that uh, the development in a city is driven by the people, by the citizens. Uh, they are the first ones to adopt new technology and to use, for instance, their smartphones uh, to make life in the city more enjoyable or efficient or just. So we expect to see a lot smarter citizens in the network society cities. So how will life be in a future city? Well, we have a vision of everything uh, that benefits from being connected will be connected. So perhaps in a future city, it will only take 10 minutes to start a new business. Uh, we will not own a car, but we will have a car subscription, and the car will be autonomous. It will drive itself. Uh, universities are accessible to all digitally. Uh, the healthcare can be provided remotely. And perhaps you will never again have to look for a parking space. So the network society will really change um, how we live, how we work, and how business operates. And I really believe that it will all start here in our cities. Thank you. Thank you.